show initially premiered on NBC, running from 1956 to 1959. This show's credibility was tarnished by the quiz show scandals of the era, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about the CBS syndicated version that ran from 1978 to 1986. Before I continue, I do need to explain what syndication means, because I sure as hell didn't know when writing this. From the best I can gather, syndication means that a program is purchased for airing by local affiliates for broadcast. So, instead of a major network mandating that the show air in a certain time slot by their affiliates, the individual affiliates have purchased the program for airing in a time slot they dictate within their airing schedules. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about the show. I've always liked the intro to this show, featuring the audience clapping in a rhythmic pattern as the announcer introduces us. It creates a real upbeat attitude and gets you excited. Added to the intro scene is the main board which makes this computer graphic effect which is pretty snazzy to look at. Here, check it out! It's everybody's game of strategy, knowledge, and fun! It's Tic Tac Go! And now, here's our host! This version of Tic Tac Go was hosted by Wink Martindale, who also hosted the shows Gambit, Debt, and High Rollers, among others. He would do the hosting from 1978 to 1985. He then left and was replaced... by Jim Caldwell for the final season. Ugh! Creepy. Anywho, the game works like this. Two players compete against each other. The current champion plays as X, and the challenger plays as O. A tic-tac-toe board of nine TV monitors is presented to the players. In these boxes, nine categories are placed. The champion goes first, selecting a box or category. A question is read to the player by the host. If they get it right, they place their respective X or O in the box, and money is added to the pot, which is recorded above the board. $200 is added for outer boxes, and $300 for the center, the center box always being a two-part and therefore more difficult question. If the player gets the question wrong or doesn't know the answer, the box remains unclaimed. After each question, the categories in the boxes are shuffled around the remaining unclaimed squares. But every category in that game is shuffled, which means that any category can appear even after a question is answered from that category. I should also mention that, as a courtesy of the two-part question, the player is allowed some think time after being read the question to think about their answer. And this is the theme they use during that. The, la the first player to make three in a row, or tic-tac-doe as the show calls it, wins the game and the money in the pot. In the event of a tie game, the board is completely wiped clean, and nine new categories are chosen. The pot is maintained, and continues to grow as new questions are answered. There are two types of categories on the board, blue and red. The blue categories are standard subjects, whereas the red categories are special questions with an added bonus attached. The host always tells the players what the categories are at the start of a game. She also remembers how well she plays the game. Okay, it was a blitz game last time, but uh, good luck to you, Jack. We've already met you, so Joan, Jack, take a look at the board. These are the subjects that we're dealing with. In this game, we have dropouts, art, odd facts, who am I, civil war, places and songs, movies, play or pass. In this category, players, you'll get a chance to answer the question, or you can pass it up for the next question, whichever you prefer. Mythology. There it's also worth noting that the special categories originally were one red box, and then it was two, and then it became three at some point? Huh. The winner of the game is Champion, and has earned the right to face the Dragon, as the show calls it. First, the contestants are told about a prize package they have a chance to win via the announcer. Then, Wink explains that the tic-tac-toe board is replaced by the numbers 1 through 9. Behind six boxes are various cash amounts from $100 to $500, a box for tick and one for tack, and of course... Or 450. Do we find it? Ah! Oh, I'm sorry about that. Okay. The contestant will pick boxes one at a time. If they can reach $1,000 in cash or pick tick and tack before they pick the dragon, they win the prize package along with the money collected on the board. A minimum of $1,000 is awarded for the tick tack win. It was also customary for a family member in the audience to help with number selection. The usual total of prize packages on the show was around three to $4,000. Champions would stay on the program until they were successfully defeated by an opponent. In addition... Guy, you have won three games. You've defeated three opponents, defeat two more for a total of five, and win this. Listen. That's a brand new car! 
and that counts for every five opponents defeated. So when the champion defeats five opponents again, they win yet another car. This would be pushed to its limit by one contestant, but I'll get into him later. This show had a straddled format rather than a self-contained one. Unlike a game show where the bonus game is always last, for instance, it could be possible that a show could be nothing but tie games by the contestants with no dragon round at all that episode, or maybe even two dragon runs in one episode, just based on the pace of the action. This is Tom McKee, the all-time grand champion of Tic-Tac-Doe. He appeared in 46 episodes of the series and played in a total of 89 games, which includes tie games. His total winnings were $312,700 in cash and prizes, which included 8 cars, 3 sailboats, 16 vacations, and $200,000 plus in cash. Damn! Honestly, the show is fairly basic. In fact, it's probably the simplest example of a quiz show you could have. Contestants pick categories, answer questions, and gain those questions right as the key to winning the game. Wink is an exceptional host with a great voice, though he does tend to push the drama of the show a bit too much, I think. Listen. Uh, 924 is the Porsche. 924 is the Porsche, that is correct. Uh, the 450 is the Mercedes. That and is correct, the Mercedes-Benz, and, and the other for Tic-Tac-Toe and $16,400, and your car, how about the 320i? The Will you let her answer the damn question? And you thought Regis was the first one to do that crap? All in all, the show is entertaining and fun. I like the fact that, unlike some newer shows and reality shows filled with stunts and big money, knowledge is the only key to winning. 